na naongea kizungine tamu sana so hiyo yani unaona anaambia watu wengine kizungu yake ni kidogo lakini ni mwerevu my tools were giga infested i used to walk this way but i've stayed in Nairobi for some time i've perfected my way of life and straight and now i walk straight <laughs> I would rather help you to find the this accident away so that bring them back. When he decided he wanted to be president. It's only today I've known that the deputy president of Kenya, Nimuta Lisona political science. Na Lisona Mumba literature. Na naongea kizungine tamu sana. So, hiyo yani unaona anaambia watu wengine kizungu yake ni kidogo lakini ni mwerevu. So, me I can just say this that uh, Whatever he has just shared is the truth of the matter. I remember in the year 2011. In the year 2011, when I was joining Igaton University for the, uh, as the first year, our lecturer took one hour just to give us a platform for each and every member of that school uh, uh, just to share his ambition of whoever he wants to become in the life. I didn't know that one day maybe I'll become a politician or I'll become anyone else. When it reached on my side, I just said that I want to be a pastor or a leader. Everyone loved that to me, by the way. It, came, it was like a joke. So and it went like that. Later on is when I just discovered the leadership coming in, and that is it. And by the time I was going to look for the member of uh, parliament, I was, get, I was doing some teaching in a certain college. And I was being paid uh, 10K a uh, month. Come on, when I am seeing the Kwamzuri 13K. And I had an ambition of being an MP. Sasa watu wameanza kunyonyoa wewe ni mwendazimu. You are mad man. They called me a mad man. So, and because I had a big ambition. So one thing me I'll just leave you with is that be determined, be focused and challenges. I know as he has just said that you have to know yourself. You have to apply the four principles there. The SWOT analysis thing. You have to know your strengths. You have to know your opportunities. You have to know your weaknesses. <laughs> so once you know them, then you are well to go. Sasa mimi siyesi ogama po vengu na jom dosi yako hapa. Lakini sinu wambia. Ya kwamba mkwe focus na mkwe na BD. Sawa sawa. Na mimi ni mkwe mtu humble. Humble sana. Ata, ata university si kwa 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 na girlfriend by the way. Na mimi kwa university kwa 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 me, I've dealt with people who take alcohol. Mutu mwenye nakunyo alcohol, it's very difficult to help that person. For sure. Sasa, if you are here and you are taking alcohol, please stop it. Because it will ruin your life. When you are deputy president, I'm saying, itakuaribu, utakufa mapema, ita nini na nini. Wachana mama ya tunafanyari, ita kwa mama ya makiki ya mawakonde. Wachana na hizo. Let me tell these comrades. Most of us, or most of you, are lost into the waves of negative attitude. You are there telling yourself that in your village, there is no one who have ever excelled. There is no one who have ever uh, become something. You are, you are there telling yourself in your home, after when you are mesoma, there is no one who have ever become something. If you are in your village, there is no one who have ever become something. Even in your home, there is no one who have ever excelled, then desire, aspire to be the first person in that village to become something. Then desire and aspire to be the first person in your home and in your village to become something. Don't be lost in negative attitude. Always put a number of positive attitude. I will be the first person in that village to make it. You must know that what brought you to this university is getting a degree. You can make many things. You can make, uh, you can, uh, make a lot of merry. You can go to Kibaoni, Wakati Mambo, Iko Sawa Sawa. But don't forget, what brought you here is a degree. If you don't go with a degree at home, you shall have let down your parents who sent you here. Because the aspirations of your parents who could not become uh, 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 degree holders are held in you people. Your parents and your mother and your father are really working very hard. Wakienda kwa ofisa wa bunga wako hapa. Waki wataftia basari. How I wish that you, your parents would be the last people in your lineage to apply and look for basaries. Because you shall be empowered. You shall have the capacity.
to take your own children waenda mpaka university wasome mpaka mahali wanataka bila kuomba bursary hata siku moja because my own parents were looking when i joined this university your excellency the deputy president nikitoka bara jambini nilikuja na shilingi 1019 na hiyo ilikuwa utajiri yetu yote kama familia tulikuwa tumauza kila kitu na kila mtu mwenye anaweza uzika huko nyumbani i came here i paid school fees for 11500 Nikalipa uh, hostel hostel 1 mimi niko na hostel 1 room 5 nikalipa 4500 hiyo 1300 ilibaki ilifaa kuniweka mimi hapa term mzima uh, semester mzima and i was here and i never got any other money from home but it never stopped me from dreaming big and becoming a big person because tumeambiwa watu wasema ni watu wakubwa sitawaambia mimi ni mtu mkubwa lakini kwa Kenya mzima watu kama mimi ni watu 47 paka yake wasenda kama mimi so you can become a big person and it is very very possible I want to make the final vote your excellency. I want to ask you comrades, mpendane sana. Work together. What brings you together is stronger than the superimposed forces that keeps you apart. Had my co uh, colleagues in that course not been very very friendly to me. For sure your excellency would not have graduated from this university. I have to the occasion realizing a full potential my good people. I want to tell you with focus and determination that one of here will not. I don't want you to be spectators in the Kenya Island. I want you to be ended, focused, take care of yourself. Outfighters. One, my mother would bring food for so income. Many times we were chased only in the head, the white one in the body. I have come to talk to you. And I want to, in a very humble manner, tell you my story. Just to encourage you that it is possible. You have seen it here. I saw you clapping as you saw me barefoot. It is true. My toes were jigger infested. I used to walk this way. But I've stayed in Nairobi for some time. I've perfected my way of life and straight and now I walk straight. <laughs> this man here who is Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya and the principal assistant to President William Ruto, one of the greatest leaders in Africa, was born 59 years ago in a small village called Herega in a grass-touched house that was the remnant of the colonial structures where my father and mother now deceased were confined by the colonialists. My parents were peasants. They had not gone to school. They owned nothing. They had only the gift of giving birth to many children because we were nine. They were freedom fighters. My father was a gunsmith in the Mount Kenya forest, where he would service weapons for the Mau Mau fighters, while my mother would bring food and ammunition stolen from Kegaja Police College to keep the war going. We were nine, no means of income. Many times we were chased out of school. Many times we went hungry. Our heads were full of lice, and I don't know whether you know how many types of lice that we have. I don't think whether you know how many types of lice we have. We have two types. One is which color? Yeah? One is black and a white one. The black one is found in the head, the white one in the body. I don't think you know. That is the kind of life we led. Our beds were full of bed bugs. Our jiggers were invested with jiggers. But we had a determination that one day we shall be somebody. Went to an ordinary school and walked every day for nine kilometers, two and four, 18 kilometers every day to get education. And somehow we went through school 
And in 1977, I was able to do my certificate of primary education. It was called CPE then. And I was able to get admission to Kenyatta High School, where I did from one to from six, and passed well and went to the University of Nairobi, where I did the Bachelor of Arts in Literature and Political Science. I got a job in the public service as a young district officer and served in many parts of this great country. Thereafter, I became the personal assistant to the head of public service then, Professor Philip Mbithi, and later on, I became the personal assistant to President Uhuru Kenyatta when he was presidential candidate and later leader of official opposition. From there, when President Uhuru Kenyatta did not make it in the year 2002, I left for the private sector and did business for 15 years. And I was able to build from nothing a huge empire of business where I employed over 1,000 people. <laughs> Later on, I was to join parliament as member of parliament, and I only stayed in parliament for five years. And after only five years in parliament, I became the, the president of this great republic. <laughs> the secret is simple. One, you must believe in God, and you must have faith. Waking up early is a blessing. A good day starts early, and you know and you for sure you know. Any day you are woken up late, by evening your day has been messed up. But if you start early, you plan your day, make all the difficult decisions in the first three hours in the morning when your mind is fresh. In the afternoon, you do routine things because your mind is not functioning as good. That is leadership. All difficult decisions you want to make. If you wake up at 6, make sure by 9 a.m. you have agreed within yourself what is it that you must do. In the afternoon, do routine things, call your friends, because you don't require any thinking to call your friends. Do normal things. Once you have self-discipline, you start on a good footing. I want to say self-discipline encompasses taking care of yourself. For you to become a leader, you must be alive. Being inside a hammer. And do the same thing all the time. Don't do it the third year. You must no, 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 I think, uh, let me... It is true, we have a new financing model for the universities. One of the reasons that made us come up with this finance model, and there is room for improvement. So, if the student leaders have a contribution to make, we shall create a mechanism so that we can listen to you, because President William Ruto is a believer that a good idea must give room to a better idea, and a better idea ultimately will give room to the best idea. We are willing to receive more ideas on how we can improve it. But one of the reasons why we came up with this model, it wasn't fair to give loans to everybody blanket. This is the reason. You can afford to take your child to a preparatory kindergarten where you pay 200,000 shillings a term. You move from there, you take your child to a high cost school where you pay 400,000 shillings a term. Then, when you go to university, the government gives you a loan. Yet, the money is not enough for everybody. So, you are saying those who are able to pay from kindergarten to primary school to secondary school, let them pay all the way to the university. And we are saying again, there are those who can't pay anything because they are not able. Let us give those ones money that is not loaned. There are those who have a little, but they need to be loaned a little because they can pay. So we have the vulnerable group, those you assist them. We have the less vulnerable, they take a certain percentage as grant and a certain percentage as loan. It is true what Mekatadili is saying, we are having many suicide 
uh, cases across the country and in our universities, where our young people, especially the men, give up because of the challenges of life. I want to encourage you, Vice Chancellor, please strengthen your counseling unit and work with the student leadership. Let us have psychologists, let us have pastors and imams to talk to our young people. My request and appeal to you as young people, when the world becomes too tough, when the going becomes rough, when you are having challenges, don't withdraw into yourself. Please speak out. When you speak out, you let off, and somebody will hear you. Many of the cases of suicide, 90% of them, if the people suffering severe depression and stress, mental stress, had chosen to share with a close friend, with a pastor, with an imam, with a lecturer, with somebody whom you think cares, those suicides would have been avoided. I want to appeal to you, please, don't suffer in silence. Speak. You must put family first. The Bible tells us, take care of your parents so that they can bless you. You must respect your father and mother. And in an African setup, your mother and father is anybody else who is the age of your mother and father, including your teachers. You must respect your elders. And that starts from an early life. And that sets you into leadership. Good people, please, keep off drugs. Drugs will give you temporary relief from problems. But by the time the drugs are through, the problems are even more. Let nobody cheat you that if you take drugs and you stay high, that the problems and the difficulties that you face have been solved. I want to speak to you at Pwani University and say that we face a big challenge in this country of drug abuse, drug and substance abuse among our people, including university students. And that's why I've come to talk to you. I want to plead with you. Please don't destroy yourself. Don't destroy your future. Because when you destroy yourself, your parents are devastated. What a talk. Uh, Ten students who are very needy in the Olympia school fees as one of the ways of the government in the end. While a Patricia Mako team, 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 Patricia